Greetings students and welcome back to another lecture. In this video we're going to be covering Green's functions, but these aren't going to be applied to PDEs because right now we're going to apply them to ODEs. I'll start by reviewing the Sturm-Liouville problem and the Sturm-Liouville theorem because that's going to be important for this video. I covered both of these things in a previous video and I'll link that in the description. Anyway, the Sturm-Liouville problem consists of the Sturm-Liouville differential equation, written right here in equation 1, as well as a couple of homogeneous boundary conditions at x equals a and x equals b. Lambda, by the way, is called the eigenvalue, and you can see that if you change the value of lambda you would end up with a different solution to the ODE, or a different eigenfunction corresponding to that eigenvalue lambda. It's kind of like how with matrices if you change the eigenvalue you typically ended up with a very different eigenvector, so the two situations are very analogous. Now the Sturm-Liouville theorem concerns the Sturm-Liouville problem, so the equation plus the two boundary conditions. What it says that if I had two solutions, y sub m and y sub n to the Sturm-Liouville problem, y sub m corresponding to some eigenvalue lambda sub m, and y sub n corresponding to some other eigenvalue lambda sub n, then those two solutions, ym and yn, would be orthogonal on the interval from one boundary a to the other boundary b with respect to the weighting function r of x. In other words, this integral, the integral from a to b of r of x, ym, yn, dx, this integral would be zero. Now there's another fact to note about the Sturm-Liouville problem that I haven't really discussed before. According to this fact, the eigenfunctions of a given Sturm-Liouville problem form a complete set, which means that any function in function space can be expressed as a linear combination of the Sturm-Liouville problem eigenfunctions. Now there are infinitely many eigenfunctions because we can make the eigenvalue lambda whatever real number we want, doesn't really matter. However, the infinite set of eigenfunctions is still a lot smaller than the infinite set of functions, so it's pretty amazing that any function can be expressed as a linear combination of the eigenfunctions or solutions to the Sturm-Liouville problem. Anyway, now that we've sort of covered the preliminaries, we're going to actually start applying Green's functions. Suppose that we want to solve this ODE in equation 3. It's just like the Sturm-Liouville equation except this time the ODE is non-homogeneous with a function f of x on the right. The Sturm-Liouville problem which corresponds to this non-homogeneous differential equation is given in equation 4. It's a very similar ODE with the exact same boundary conditions but the only difference is that now we've gotten rid of f of x so we've made the problem a homogeneous ODE problem. Now let's suppose that the eigenfunctions of this homogeneous problem, this Sturm-Liouville problem now, they're given by y sub n, and lambda sub n are the corresponding eigenvalues. Because the set of eigenfunctions is complete as we mentioned earlier, we can express the solution y to our non-homogeneous ODE as a linear combination of these eigenfunctions y sub n. What we're going to do next is plug in this y into our non-homogeneous ODE in equation 3, and then solve for these unknown constants c sub n. This procedure should be very familiar to you, it's actually kind of like solving ODEs with power series except now we're solving a non-homogeneous ODE with an eigenfunction series. Anyway, the first derivative of y is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times the derivative of y sub n since c is just a constant. And if we plug this into equation 3, here's what we'll get. Since the derivative is a linear operator, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivative, so we can switch the position of the derivative and summation and also move this q inside the summation. Once we do that, we can then combine terms to get the following expression. Now inside these square brackets we can add lambda sub n times r of x and subtract lambda sub n times r of x. These terms in the summation involving y sub n are equal to zero according to equation 4 which means that this is what we'll be left with. What we're going to do now is multiply both sides by y sub m, another eigenfunction of equation 4 corresponding to a different eigenvalue lambda sub n, we're going to multiply both sides by y sub m and integrate from a to b. We can then move the integral inside the summation like so, since integration is also a linear operator, 
And now what we get is this equation. This integral on the left here is always zero, except when m and n are equal to each other. Why? Because of the orthogonality relation from the Sturm-Liouville theorem. So everything on the left is zero except when m equals n, which means that this is what we'll end up with. So if we isolate c sub n, we'll finally end up with this equation for the unknown constant c sub n. In this equation, the x gets integrated out, and it really doesn't matter which variable we're integrating with respect to. So what I'm going to do here is replace the x by a dummy integration variable z, just for our later convenience. Let's now plug in the c sub n that we found into the expression for the solution y to the non-homogeneous ODE. Now, suppose that my eigenfunctions y sub n are all normalized, which means that the integral in the denominator is equal to 1. Normalizing the eigenfunctions, by the way, isn't too difficult. All we do is multiply by a constant. So if our eigenfunctions are normalized, this is what we'll end up with for y of x. Let's switch the integral with the summation, again because integration is a linear operator, and here's what we end up with. y of x equals the integral from a to b of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of y sub n of z times y sub n of x over lambda minus lambda n times f of z dz. This quantity in the square brackets here is a function of both x and the dummy variable z. In fact, it's got a special name. It's called the Green's function for this problem, which I'll denote as g of x comma z. If we then express everything in terms of this Green's function, we'll find that the solution y is the integral from a to b of our Green's function times f of z dz, where the Green's function g of x comma z is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of y sub n of z times y sub n of x over lambda minus lambda n. So we've solved the non-homogeneous ODE by this Green's function method. There's a couple of interesting things though that I'd like to note before I finish off this lecture. The first thing is that the Green's function is symmetric, meaning that if we switch the arguments, if we switch the x and the z, then we end up with the same result. This should be pretty obvious from the definition we wrote up here. The second thing to note concerns the significance of Green's function. Now just from looking at these formulas, you may not have immediately realized the significance of Green's function, but I'll show you it right now using a pretty cool argument. Let's say that our f of z, you know the function that makes our ODE non-homogeneous, the quote-unquote input, suppose that our function f of z is a delta function centered at x. In that case, if we use this formula for the solution y of x, then we can apply this integration property of delta functions. So if we end up applying the integration property of delta functions for y of x, we'll find that y is just equal to g of x comma x, or g of x. What does this result even mean though? Well, it means that the Green's function is the solution to this non-homogeneous ODE if our f of x were a delta function. So what are we even doing with this whole Green's function method? Well, we're breaking up our arbitrary input f of x into a series of impulses, a series of delta functions. Then we're finding the response of the ODE to each of those delta functions. In other words, we're finding the Green's function. And finally, we're adding or integrating the solution to those impulses, those Green functions, to find our full solution y of x to an arbitrary input f of x. And this is the significance of using Green's functions. They're solutions to the ODE for single impulse inputs, and if you add or integrate enough of them together, you can, in theory, find the solution to the ODE for any input. Anyway, that should do it for the lecture. I'd just like to finish off by thanking my patrons Jacob Soares and Jennifer Heffman for donating at the $5 level or higher to my Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, I've put a link to my Patreon account in the description, and you can support me there if you wish. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.